Hey guys, what's up? It's me, J Choice Tivitz. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to the first place. And if it's not, welcome back. So as you can probably see, I'm in a different setup. We are still in quarantine. Coronavirus, we're all dealing with it now. So I hope everyone's safe, doing well, and sticking to my normal content. Um, I'm actually probably going to be doing a little bit more content because I have more free time now. It's our second weekend, and today has been a full day of just content making. Actually, let me show you guys real quick just what this whole setup looks like. This is what I've done to Jeremy's apartment since I'm staying here right now. We just got loads of crap. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, in today's video, I wanted to go through one of my bags, do another bag review. I realize I haven't um, done a full review on this bag. I have do have this bag on another one of my videos when I unbox it um, because I ended up getting, it was my first purchase I got on eBay from like a private seller. If you wanna watch that video, I'll leave it right here and linked below. But this is gonna be more of like a review and then like three styles and outfits I wear with this bag. But yeah, so if you want to know more about the men's Dior saddle, the classic that has been made um, for the guys, which we love, thank you Kim Jones, then stick around for this video. Oh, and like I always forget, I always forget, if this is your first time and you like this video, definitely subscribe. I love to have you a part of my little um, luxury fashion menswear family. Um, and you know, follow me on all my socials, all that jazz. I just got recently back into Pinterest, um, so I'm back on Pinterest. Um, so you can follow me there, follow me on Instagram. I've also been tweeting, so if you want to hear the insides of my thoughts and maybe be offended, check me out on Twitter too. Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. Okay, so this is our bag. I have the black style. Um, it is all black with silver hardware and the Alex Christian Dior buckle. This just kind of goes like so. I'll kind of break it down from the good, the bad, and I'll give kind of like my final thoughts at the end. So the good is that this bag is just like a classic. Like John Galliano introduced it back in the 90s when he was um, creative director for Woman, where if anyone, I've actually never watched Sex in the City. Um, I know, like I'm a New Yorker, I haven't watched Sex in the City, and I'm into fashion with like the most iconic like style fashion show. But anyway, that bag kind of got huge because it was kind of like known as like the Sex in the City bag, because I guess like Carrie, one of the characters, always had the bag. It's always been kind of a cult classic within the Dior house. Um, summer of 2019, uh, Kim Jones did, I think, one of his first shows for men's Dior after coming from Louis Vuitton, and he introduced this for the guys. The first one that was introduced was actually a white stitched, um, like contrast stitched one. And that's actually the one I originally wanted when I was looking for a pre-loved, but I, it was a little hard to find. And then the ones that I did found were definitely fakes. Um, so I didn't go with those. <laughs> so I ended up with the all black because you know, all black class you can kind of wear with everything. I have to admit, I haven't gotten as much use out of this bag as I would like. It's just because I'm actually not sure why I don't go for it that much. Like when I was putting together these looks I'll show later, I was like, oh wait, this bag actually adds a lot to an outfit. I really probably should wear it more. But I think I talked to before about how like a lot of my bags are like interesting shapes or tiny bags or um, just like, like artistic bags. And like for my lifestyle, since I'm kind of always on the go and um, I work a lot too and for my work I need my computer like all the time, I really end up always having like my backpack. And so I really can only wear this like on the weekends if I go out or like go to brunch and stuff. And actually I'm like really a homebody. So this whole quarantine thing hasn't really been that much of a difference for me. Cause I'm like normally like home. So that's kind of why I think one of, the, one of the reasons why I haven't picked up this bag as much. I do think the style is, it's great. It also, like I mentioned, it's a classic. So I think I'll always have it in my collection um, just because I think it's like really cool. Um, inside, but I've, I'll show, I've shown kind of all this in my other video in more detail, so if you want to look at that, I definitely recommend that. But inside I have like a bunch of stuffing. Oh, what's this? Oh, a beauty service from Nordstrom's. Always finding random things in my bags. A receipt. <laughs> yeah, inside, it's like kind of, 
It can hold a good amount. Um, I'll kind of run through some things that it can hold. I have been able to fit like a pair of like workout shorts and um, a shirt, which like I know if you have followed my channel on Instagram before, I definitely have talked about how I a lot of my bags carry my workout clothes in them, um, just because I'm kind of always on the go and I like to work out. So you know, put the might as well use the back of what it's meant for to hold things. Yeah, so I have been able to fit like a workout shirt and shorts, which is like that's like pretty. Um, they're pretty like hefty things to put in a bag, and it fits fine. Um, it doesn't bulge too much. The only thing is that the shape is a little strange. So like, since it kind of curves like this, you have to play a little bit of Tetris when you're putting things in the bag. So I would say that that's something kind of to keep track of. Um, in terms of the quality of the bag, I originally actually wanted to get this when it first came out, like look like right when it first came out. It was between this and the, my Louis Vuitton soft trunk. And I remember actually going to see both. And I was actually kind of surprised that it's as flimsy as it was. I remember trying this on for the first time in the Dior store. And when I like felt it, it just felt like the structure isn't, it's not as structured as you might think. Like it's very soft. It's like a very soft leather. And it doesn't really have like hard, stiff shapes. And I really, I like the Louis Vuitton one because the leather is a little bit thicker. So I ended up getting that one first. And then like, I think probably it was like six or eight months later, I ended up getting this one pre-loved. That is something um, that kind of deterred me in the beginning from getting it. I have it now, so clearly didn't deter me enough to not buy it. That would I think be one of the bands of this piece. Another thing that I found is that the buckle, which is an Alex buckle, is also really cool. I really love his buckles. So that is a, like a really cool detail, but I think for what I'd say is kind of annoying is that if you do it really tight, let's like show you. If you like push it really tight like this, this just like, there's nowhere like where this can go. So it kind of just like hangs really loosely. I'm really tiny, like I'm really thin. So I have to kind of, depending on like, I like to wear it like this sometimes. And so then it, that, this just kind of like flaps really long. So that is something that I've noticed is sometimes kind of annoying. Also, if you wear like a big coat, you know I love coats. And so the strap, sometimes depending on like how big your coat is, it'll push into like, it's kind of a bad example, but if you're wearing a big coat, it will cut your coat a little strange. So you have like it loose on this side and then it's like really tight on this side. You can kind of see. Um, this is like, I can just kind of give an example. Kind of see how this is an oversized hoodie. So I wear it like this and like it pushes against here. So it can be kind of weird when it like how, how it cuts your tops. That's like something I've kind of noticed and can be kind of annoying. Also, let's talk the price because originally this bag is like I think like $2,400. I do not think it's that worth that much, especially if you're getting the plain black. I think looking back, I would have gotten this bag in more of like a fun seasonal color or maybe just tried something a little different just because I think it would be like a little bit more worth the money. Like as just a plain black shaped bag. I understand like the craftsmanship is amazing. It's Dior. There's a great video too. I'll link it below on kind of how this bag is made and how they're able to get this shape because it does take a lot of time. So I understand that part, but it's really like the leather quality isn't the most amazing um, compared to like other leather pieces I have. And I just think that for the price, it's a little much. I, I think it's worth paying this price if you get like a seasonal style. So like maybe like a bright color or something that has like contrast stitch or something that maybe has like a different color strap. And there are so many different styles of this bag and every season they come out with different like variations of it. There's this beautiful, beautiful blue one that is in the most recent, I think most recent collection. It's awesome. Um, like, but something like that, like, yeah, like that's worth the high price point just because you can tell like, the, the way they can get the leather, like the color of the leather. Um, there's like little details I think make, worth it, make it worth the price. For this one, plain black, it's not worth the full price. Luckily I didn't get it for the full price. I got an amazing price from a private sale on eBay, like I mentioned before. And so that's what I actually recommend doing is looking for it on the pre-love market. There are also so many on the pre-love market because just like I said, I don't really use this bag that much. And I feel like a lot of people get like buying to the trend. It's like cool for a minute, but then they realize it's really not the most practical piece. And a lot of people sell it. So I definitely would look on 
pre-loved. I was actually looking on the real real before filming this video and they have pre-loved ones for like $1,800. So I think that actually even an extra 20% off on top of that if you use code real. Um, I used to work at the real real so wow, I really felt like a salesperson there. 20% off with code real. That's kind of my overview of the bag, kind of like the good and the bad. And so in terms of how I style it, I've put together three different looks, which I'll include right here. So the first one is actually what I'm wearing. It's just this like purple, like it's not actually a hoodie, it's more just like a pullover. This purple pullover from Martin Rose and like some uh, clean straight leg black pants from this Korean brand. I forgot the name. Everything will be linked down below if I can find it as well. And then my Balenciaga track sneakers. This is like a super, casual look to go with this bag. I can like just kind of throw it over the shoulder. I think it's like the, the all black. It really like works with this and like you have like the pop of color with the pullover. So I think that's like a really cool casual look. The second one is of course denim on denim because he doesn't love denim on denim. I honestly think that like denim has kind of always been a trend but in the last few seasons I've just seen denim has just like skyrocketed. You have like so many denim on denim looks on the runway you have denim in different um different variations, like different colors, different styles. So the second one is a full denim on denim look with this kind of like half denim, half leather um, jacket that I have. I think the leather with this um, bag looks really cool. So I have that, then I just have on a pair of just classic, kind of like, not necessarily straight leg, but a little bit different shape from the black ones I had before. Um, but I think the color of denim matched really well, so that's why I picked those. And then I topped it off with a, a little bit more black, kind of like a blue and black look, um, with my new Bottega Veneta boots, which I had in my most, not my most recent video, but like a pretty recent video with my sister unboxing those. Um, Bottega Veneta! <laughs> but I love those. I waited so long to find those. They were like impossible to get. And they finally restocked on Essence. So. I have those. I think this whole look looks just really cool, edgy. Um, it kind of gives me like military-esque vibes, but then at the same time like kind of cowboy vibes. I'm really into it. I'm just like really into that whole look. Okay, so the third and final look is a little bit more elevated and it's um, with a blazer with like these slacks I got. Actually, both the blazer and the slacks are vintage from my Paris thrifting um, haul, which I'll include that video below and I'll link it above, but um, love both of these pieces. So I paired it out with a white turtleneck and white Air Force Ones. And I love how like having the pants cuffed because they have like a really cool like satin under, um, like under bottom, under, does that make sense? Under bottom? No. The inside of the pants is a really cool satin material and like the color is a little bit darker than the outside of the pant. So cuffing them is really cool. So I wear those cuffed with my Air Force Ones. No socks, I think actually like the skin like looks cool. Uh, and then with this guy, and I think it actually like, you can really like dress this up and dress this whole outfit down. Like it can be worn very casually and then it can also be worn like a little bit more like fancy if you're going out to somewhere like that's a little bit more formal. But still, while still looking very fashion. So yeah, those are just the three ways I think you can kind of wear this bag, like more casual up to like a little bit more elevated. So final thoughts about this bag is that there's no denying it's a classic piece and it's Dior. Really, most things that they do are amazing. Like any luxury lover would love to have those type of pieces in their collection. I think that if you're not gonna go with one of like the seasonal like bright colors or like a little bit more artistic and just gonna go with more of a classic. I really like it into getting it pre-loved because the price is expensive. So I definitely say that, um, but all in all, I think it's a great piece. Um, and I'm really glad and lucky to have it. And I think even though I don't wear it as much, doing these videos of like the different looks kind of reminded me how cool this bag is and how it'll really kind of take your look to the next level. So I've kind of, like doing this because it kind of reminded me how much I like this bag. So yeah, those are kind of my final thoughts. And thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you. And um, hit the thumbs up. Really appreciate it. But um, let me know what else you guys would want to see during this quarantine season. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. And I will see you guys on the next video.